Hi everyone, we are going to explain the exercise from 1 to 8 of chapter 1 which is called 10 Principles of Economics of Economics, which is the book of Gregory Mankiw. So the first question they ask about describe some of the trade-offs faced by the following. A. A family deciding a whether to buy a car. So the family can buy different things. So this is the trade-off because the the money that they are going to pay or they are going to spend on the car they can spend in different stuff. As for example, they can buy a house or they can use like a, the first fee for paying the house. The other what about vacation? Maybe instead of buying the car, they can go on vacation. Or the third, maybe they can they can save some money. So instead of buying a car, they have the trade-off between buying a car or saving the money or putting away some money. So these are the examples that I that I chose for the for this case. The second case is uh, a member of Congress deciding how much to spend on national parks. So it is about uh, public uh, public sp sp spend. So in this case, the congressman has a trade-off with, for example, schools. So maybe this quantity of money, the congressman can uh, spend on school on education. So this is one trade-off. Other trade-off is with war. So maybe this money that they are going to in, they are going to spend in national parks, they can use for uh, the war for financing the war. The war. And the other one maybe highways. So instead of spending in national parks, they can trade-off with the highways. So the third point, the C, the first C, one C, a company president deciding whether to open a new factory. So the company president faces, faces some trade-offs as the other cases. So what about the hiring? Maybe instead of uh, opening a new camp factory, the company president, the this guy can hire more people instead of uh, open a new factory. So the other part it could be invest. So maybe they can invest in the stock exchange, they can invest in real estate, uh, they can invest in other part uh, without without opening a new factory. And the third case, what about the machinery? So machinery. So maybe they can buy some machine which could be some capital, it would be kind of a way of investment in order to produce more instead of opening the factory. The, the last case is a professor deciding how much to prepare it for class. For, so it could be, for example, my case. So how much uh, time I'm going to devote for uh, doing this video. Maybe if I have like children, I, I, I can go to share this time with the children. So it would be my trade off, I can share with them. But what about TV? Maybe I can go, lie down, and turn on my TV and watch uh, some series, some movies, some soap operas, whatever I want. Or the last part, what about a beer? Instead of talking here, I can go and drink a beer. So this is a trade-off that I have. So if you want to know the answer, my opportunity cost uh, is, is lower here because I'm here explaining. So I value more what I'm doing here. The second point, you are trying to decide whether to take a vacation. Most of the costs of the vacation, effort, hotel, foregone, wages are measured in dollars, but the benefits of the vacation are psychological. How can you compare the benefits to the cost? So uh, I, I want to approach this exercise like I can, it represents the way to give to the vacation. So the more you pay for vacation, the more facilities that you pay for, it represents like you value more 
uh, this time is like compensate the rewarding of this vacation it means the benefits of this vacation so it depends uh, of the weight you give so the mean is like benefits to the cost they have to be they have to be at least equal okay in this case the psychological revenue that I receive it got to be equivalent to the cost monetary cost of this vacation otherwise I stay at home so it is related with the principle the cost of something is what you get up give up to get it so because you value you because you value your benefits for the price you're paying so in this case what are you give what are you giving up you're giving up the time right so in this case we're comparing sorry the dollars the cost the monetary cost so you're giving up your, your, your money that you have saved before okay in order to get it what are you getting you're getting the vacation you're getting the experience so what is this cycle so this is the psychological benefit is the price of all trade so this is the benefits, the psychological, and the cost of the price that you pay for the trip. In the third point, imagine you were planning to spend Saturday working as your part-time job, but a friend asked you to go skiing. Um, what is the true cost of going skiing? So the true cost is the time that you are not going to spend working uh, because you you are like changing this is your trade-off and you choose to go skiing so this is your trade-off and what you are where you are like missing is the time that you're going to spend working but now suppose that you have been planning to spend the day studying at the library what is the cost of going skiing in this case in this case explain so the true cost is the time that you are not going to spend studying it could be the case actually it just like came to my mind the first case so I maybe I may add that maybe if you receive some money for this work uh, of your part-time job so maybe it would be the opportunity cause you can value in dollars because the money that you are not going to receive because you are going sky skiing so this could be the the the, the the true cost as well the time and it could be the monetary part so uh, we can value both cases that the cost is the opportunity cost but maybe in the first one I can value this in dollars so the fourth point says you win $100 in a basketball pool you have a choice between spending money now or putting it away for a year in a bank account that pays five percent interest what is the opportunity cost of spending one hundred dollars now so we know that if i spend the money now i cannot earn the five percent interest of the money so for this reason we call the interest rate as the real cost of money so in this case the opportunity cost of spending this money now it could be the interest that I will receive in one year so this is the, the opportunity cost which is the 5% interest okay so the next point the company that you manage has invested 5 million in de developing a new product but the development is not quite finished at a present meeting, your salespeople report that the introduction of competing products has reduced the expected sales of your new product to 3 million. If it would cost 1 million to finish development and make the product, should you go ahead and do so? What is the most that you should pay to complete development so what I think about this point so in this thing the first the first fact that we have to figure out is like we are talking about margin and marginal margin cost so we know that as a manager I would spend uh, the 1 million absolutely because we will recover or we will have back at least two millions instead of losing them so we know that for example without investing this one million I cannot receive 
receive anything because I need to finish so when I spend this 1 million automatically I can have my expected my expect sales which is going to be 3 million so that place I have 2 million instead instead of losing them so now I can infer the last question which is what is the most that you should pay to complete development so I can pay until 3 million so I can see how where I recuperate the at least the additional cost so I mean I'm saying that in C case we are saying that the marginal income is exactly to the marginal cost so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll pay maximum 3 million so the six is let's consider that three managers of the magic passion company are discussing a possible increase in production each suggests uh, a way to make this decision so there is the first Harry uh, who says uh, we should examine whether our company's productivity gallons of passion per worker would rise or fall the next Ron he says we should examine whether our average cost cost per worker would rise or fall and the last one Hermione we should examine whether the extra revenue from selling the additional passion would be greater or is smaller than the extra cost so what do you think is right and why so from my point of view I agree with Hermione position because he's talking more about marginal and revenue and marginal revenue it is related with the way to think of rational people which they think in margin cost so he thinks that it's just profitable if the marginal income is larger than the marginal cost so just uh, I can increase the production if the one cent that I receive for this product for this increasing in production this money that I receive is larger than the cost that I have to spend for this increasing in production the seven uh, the social security system provides income for people over 65 if a recipient of social security decides to work and earn some income the amount he or she receives in social security benefits is typically reduced so the first question is how does the provision of social security affect people's incentive to save while working so because they know that the opportunity cost of working after 65 is higher than the opportunity cost that they have meanwhile or in the meantime they're working therefore there is an incentive to save before getting retired absolutely because if you know that after 65 when you work you have like deduction of your total like retired income so it's better to work in the time that you, you were I mean you are not going to be punished for that so this is the incentive of saving when they are working so the second question is how does the reduction in benefits associated with higher earnings affect people's incentive to work past age 65 so then uh, the incentive to work is lower than lower earnings um, why because they they could could be higher to to overcome so when you have a higher income you have to really work more on really profitable activities to compensate the cut the cut that you are having then the opportunity cost is higher at the end you don't have too much incentives to work okay the last point is a recent bill reforming the government's anti-poverty programs limited many welfare recipients to only two year benefits so how does this change affect the incentive for working so the point is like recipients have the incentive to find a job during this, this period of time otherwise with the anti-poverty program forever imagine that the, all this program is forever people would wouldn't have any incentive to work because you already you have this even if it's not too much you don't have any incentive to work okay and how might 
this change represents a trade-off between equity and e efficiency. So, in terms of equity, this anti-poverty program reduces the gap and increase equity because people that they don't have possibility even for eating they will be provided for money for covering these, these necessities but if we think about the other part on the other hand we see that in terms of efficiency it decreases why because this anti-poverty program can be invested in more productive activities so maybe government again they would say okay I'm not going to provide these people these benefits for two years maybe I'll, I'll invest in more productive in innovation or in, in public facilities okay whatever so this is like the trade-off because we are working equity for the anti-poverty anti -poverty program but we are losing efficiency by providing this money so we have finished the <coughs> excuse me we have finished the first eight exercises i hope it had it has uh, it has worth uh, or it's worth for you and that's it enjoy economics and see you the next video bye bye